Greetings and salutations. Thanks for clicking on the video. Today we're going to take a look at Ubuntu BSD. I was sitting just the other day thinking to myself, you know, the Ubuntu Linux system is so modular, I bet somebody could put the Unix kernel in it and get the same functionality. And guess what? Somebody did. I just found out about this last night. It's a new project called Ubuntu BSD and the code name is escape from system D okay it's hosted on SourceForge and here is the download page I downloaded the ISO and I have installed it and we're gonna take a look at it system D is an initialization system that's new to the Linux operating system and a lot of distributions have adopted it and it replaces older systems Ubuntu used to use a system that they developed called upstart and system D is intended to be a universal replacement with improvements and some people like it and some people really don't like it and for the average desktop user it really doesn't make that much difference unless you have to go in and change something with the initialization scripts the commands are different with system D than they are with upstart or other systems out there and I have two systems that are currently running system D Ubuntu switched to that I think 1410 or 1504 and I haven't had any major issues with it one way or the other the only difference is is that if I do want to change something I've got to use a different command these days and I have to work with system D no big deal anyway these guys have taken the Ubuntu software repositories and they have switched out the BSD Unix kernel by the way, the BSD Unix kernel is also the kernel that's used for Mac OS X. So, there you go. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. I'm going to boot it up. I did manage to get it installed, no problems. I just followed the bouncing ball. It is not a graphical installer. The installer is very similar to the one that you see if you would install Ubuntu Server or do a network install of Ubuntu and at one point it stops and asks you about what software you want installed the only desktop environment that they actually offer right now is Zubuntu or Xubuntu which is the XFCE desktop and you can install this and just have a base server installation you can put Tomcat on here you can put a LAMP server on here all kinds of crazy stuff but I just went ahead and installed the Xubuntu desktop and that was it so here's our login screen and this is what it looks like when it logs in this is not actually here it's just it sticks around after the login it's like the screen here does not refresh there doesn't seem to be any background showing as well. There are no VirtualBox drivers in the system that I can find, and I did not attempt to install VirtualBox drivers from the Guest Editions CD that you can mount because I have no idea whether that will work or not. As a matter of fact, this is the second time that I have installed this because the first time I installed it, I was getting this error where it's saying that it can't get its updates and that is because the repositories that are set up by default don't seem to be working this is a beta version and I'm sure that that will be ironed out as time goes on but it uh, is kind of discouraging that this does not run well in VirtualBox at all if you are going to create a distribution of Linux a great deal of your time needs to be spent making sure that it runs properly in VirtualBox and the reason why is that people out in the community like myself who post videos and write blog posts about new distributions this is where we test it so if it doesn't work very well in VirtualBox it's not going to go over too big in the community just my two cents worth on that and there has been no attempt to make this work well in VirtualBox at all by the developers. You get 
the same applications that you would get with the Xubuntu desktop. They have the Ubuntu Software Center. This is based on Ubuntu 1510 Wiley Werewolf. So I'm assuming that it's the same packages that you would get in the current version of Ubuntu, which is 1510. I do not know exactly which version of FreeBSD this is based on. Actually, I think that it's based on PCBSD, which is a version of BSD that comes with a desktop. I tried that out about a year and a half ago, and it came with a KDE desktop, and there was some major weirdness with it. So you install it, right? I did it from a DVD, and once I installed the system, it no longer saw the DVD drive in the system. It had no clue that there was one there. So I looked that up, and I remember that I had to go and run a command at the terminal to mount the DVD manually, and it, that didn't work, which I found to be very strange. Now, I don't know whether that is a BSD thing, that they do not automatically see the drives in the computer and you have to do it manually but it never worked and I never saw an advantage in running PC BSD over uh, any of the major Linux distributions Ubuntu Fedora whatever it's, it's all the same software pretty much so unless you have a specific reason for wanting to use FreeBSD or PC BSD I really don't see the point in it but people who run servers really like FreeBSD for a lot of reasons those people who do not like the system D initialization system in Linux like FreeBSD because they have not adopted it. Of course, FreeSB uses ZFS on the hard drives, which is an advanced file system that is great for servers and high input and output situations where you have, you know, lots of reads and writes. And there are many features in there that is supposed to be coming to Ubuntu 1604. By the way, I'd mentioned that before, and somebody said that uh, ZFS was native to Solaris. I'd never heard that up until somebody brought that to my attention. And, of course, I've always heard it in connection with uh, BSD. And I don't know a great deal about BSD, either FreeBSD or PCBSD, because I've just never played with it too much. So we have major issues here beyond not having the correct drivers for VirtualBox. They're unavailable. You cannot install them. The developers here have added apt tools. So as I recall, the command line tool for installing things in BSD is a program called PKG, which seemed to work pretty well. So let's try and update the system from a terminal here. And it goes out and it tries to get the updates. And as you can see, we have lots of errors. Some files weren't fetched. Let's try and actually run the updates. And it doesn't find anything because it's unable to actually read from the repositories. And this is the problem that I've had after attempting to install this twice. And so therefore you can't do anything with it. You can't add any software at this point. You can't do much at all. It does have internet access. So if we ping... As you can see, we've got internet access and that's working the way it should, but the repositories that are installed by default do not work at all. So therefore, no drivers and no software can be put in this machine. It's pretty much whatever is on this disk. Just curious what happens here. I hadn't actually tried this. Maybe some of the repositories work? Well, it's attempting to install. Let's see what it does.
well, maybe it does work somewhat because it is going out and getting this piece of software and installing it on the system. Or at least it appears to be. Very strange. We did get this error message here where it is saying that it couldn't install updates or couldn't find the updates. So. I have no idea what this package is. But it's being installed, I think. The other thing that I found was is that the system will not actually shut down. It wouldn't shut down after it installed, and it will not shut down from the shutdown button here. You, as a matter of fact, you don't get one. So that's kind of interesting. I'll show you that in just a second. I want to give this a moment to see whether it's going to actually work. It doesn't appear to be because it's just sitting there. No hard drive action. It did look like it went and downloaded something though. Oh, now we got the CPU fan spinning up. All right, we'll just show you this real quick while that's running in the background. So when you go to log out, you get the choice to log out. That's it. And even if you do log out, the shutdown button on the LightDM desktop manager screen doesn't work. So I'm assuming that this isn't working and it's crashed or something's wrong here because it doesn't appear to be doing much. Of course, this is the Ubuntu Software Center, which is a crappy application anyway. So even if it was working right, it could still lock up. That's pretty much it. Um, there's not much more to talk about here. This is obviously a beta. This is obviously something that somebody has to work on. And there might be a segment out there who would like to have a distribution which was a mix of FreeBSD and Ubuntu. Not me, but somebody out there might like to do it. <laughs> so let's let me show you here. If I go to, I'm going to go ahead and log out and follow the instructions to do that. Now if I come over here you will see that none of this works. So the only way that I can actually shut down this machine from the GUI is to first tap the control key to get gain control over the system once again and then power off the machine. So there you have it. It is a look at Ubuntu BSD. Obviously a lot more work needs to be done but it kinda just goes to show that anything is possible with open source software. If you can think it you can probably go out there and do it and for that I applaud them. I mean giving it a try and putting it out there that's pretty awesome. But as far as it being a usable system at this point, no way, but kind of interesting to look at. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to check out Easy Linux on the web. Check out Easy Linux on Facebook, and if you would, give it a like. And also check out FreedomPenguin.com for articles about Linux from me and other contributors. And we will do this again sometime real soon. Thanks for watching.